malnutrition is a major public health problem in Zimbabwe. But we are also getting overnutrition. I didn't say that Dr. Matsima was... <laughs> no, but he is aware that there are a lot of people now who are over, if you like, one in nutrition, you are one this. So while we have that small population of obese and overweight, but our major, major problem now, and those who are obese and overweight will have the problems of diabetes, high blood pressure, so watch out as well. And then I've got the problem of malnourished people. This is the majority of our children that are aged below the ages of five years. You are aware that Mwana Anoyama, Vajinji Wano Shikisa, 18 months, Vajiyamu Savana. But between 18 months and five years, Mwana Papa, Pakunyanya Kumamisha, Ne Mamu Maduro Baedu, Dopo Nona. Manachita, uh, real malnourished children, that age group, between 18 months and 5 years. So we must take particular, particular interest in that. Also, our pregnant mothers, ipapo muno ziwakare imi, kutumayona umangu mazimaeka na ane pamiri, wano traga mchenji, wano haku jika mchenji. Mwosha mauti, ah, kuaru jika ivunda and it's because they have got deficiency in their food. And mchenje une iron. So they look for iron. They actually crave for it. Kutondo traga, they actually look for it. And you find people eating uh, that mchenje. Um, um, and it's because of that deficiency in Nengeripo. So we have that challenge. And we are happy that Isusu in the Ministry of Health we have identified Kuti. One in every three children is too short for their age. Akafupika kupinda One in every three. And this is what we call stunting. Stunting, you know, you know it out to one. Mentally, aushike po unufanla kushika. That is stunting yoyo. And also, stetcha yako aishike po unufanla kushika. Pakukura. And also cognitive kungons wisisa modo. Inuitashomo. Saga, this is important for us to address standing. It's important for the Minister of Health to address standing and malnutrition. It is important that we partner with the Minister of Agriculture. Because they are the ones who produce the food. They are the ones who promote the food. And we want them to promote the right types of food. Sometimes with the wrong food. That is why it is important for us as a ministry to push and educate each other with what is the right food, what has got that food in it for ourselves. So micronutrient deficiency is also called hidden hunger. Even what to a good as a but which in your touch calf, doing it to a funka yam, which can change. And we are aware that one in every five children aged between six months and 15 months are deficient in vitamin A. Dopane, dopane, you mean vitamin A. That's where you come in. This statistics is also true for women of childbearing age. So the World Health Organization tells us that vitamin A deficiency in children under the age of five face a higher risk of death before their fifth birthday. So you name our consequences, Akawanda. And we don't want to alarm people. We've been living with this, but we need to address it in a very vigorous manner. Our national statistics also show us that deficiencies of vitamins and minerals are more prevalent in children and women, particularly in rural areas, compared to those living in urban areas. So, even when we have a problem, we have a problem. Even when we have a problem, we have a problem. We have a problem. We have a problem. We have a 
a address kumamisha kwedi In 2015, in November, like what Dr. Piri has said, my ministry launched the National Fortification Strategy to address micronutrient deficiencies among the population of Zimbabwe. And we recognize my, what we should do to address this. First of all, in on the micronutrient supplementation, we can supplement, we can supplement your food. We do industrial food fortification. Chakutima industries wano gazira ufu, wano gazira sugar, wano gazira cooking oil, wano pa wheat, pa wheat flour, tukuti isai zinc imomo, isai vitamin A imomo, isai vitamin B imomo, isai iron imomo. So those are the four groups of foods that we have identified that kwese kunenge kuchigazirwa hufu, these big companies that make hufu, that make sugar, that make cooking oil, should, and that make wheat, wheat flour, to not say those ingredients, including vitamin A. And we're going to do it by force, what we call compulsory fortification. Atisiku wapa chance, yikuti wate hai watoita eduka na watatibi. It's going to be by compulsion, because we know it's good for our population. And we know that it costs them very, very little to add that much more power into uh, their foods. So we are uh, instigating that that be made by compulsion. Using current consumption patterns, the fortification strategy has identified those areas that I've talked about. And my ministry is already now doing the details. How do we force them? How do we monitor it? We must be able to check, but is it really fortified? Is it really fortified to the degree that we want? So that is what our technicians, our technical people, including another doctor, Madzimo Onema Grazao, are working on. The evidence shows that poor and vulnerable population of women and pregnant women living in rural areas are affected much more. As it is so that food is not going to be fortified because you can't get you can't get hold of it. And it because next door. Saka aiskushika kuna ndi wapi wana national foods. Aiskushika ikoko. So that food is not going to be fortified by industrial fortification. Yon ndi kuta orai, yiku forsai. So, imimi ndopo mine basa manji. Kuti, if you can now biofortify, that means, chibage, chino muno jigara, chinenge chato iskwa vitamin A iyoyo. Chibage, chino muno jigara. Wheat yo muno jigara, beans yo muno jigara, sweet potato yo muno jigara, ine nge hai skuwa ma fortifikens ii ayo. Even mga zoli, tenge sila na yinyi kumbayi koko kumamisha, so nge zato kafu wa kutara. That's why you are so important. You understand what I'm saying? Andi tuku nunga so nzwizi sana? Tuku nunga so nzwizi sana ya? Kuti ipa hapo ndopa ne basa hawa manji. That we hope that your seeds, when you do fortify them, sweet potatoes, maize, beans, uh, and, and other crops, I think that will go a long way to satisfying Isusu Sotir Kudao, the Minister of Health. And Isusu in, the mini, in, in Zimbabwe were actually leading in issues of biofortification. Zimbabwe uh, is going to host the Codex Alimentaris Commission um, uh, this, this coming month, and we, we are leading as a country. So we must show by example, you must be part and parcel of that movement Yotiruku Pusha for the whole world to say in developing countries we are undernourished, let's eat the right foods, let's biofortify, let's force industry to fortify so that our populations are brighter, are taller, are healthier, and indeed have got more resistance to disease. I would like to applaud the work being done under the Livelihood and Food Security Program to promote 
dietary diversification through promoting production and consumption of a wide range of crops and livestock that enrich our people's diets. Eh, I am a daughter, Majanji. My wild fruits, Edu, what not wild, and this is what is about what wild fruits. Yeah, yo, they are very good. Eh, Rio, Rio, Munga, those small grains have got a lot of micronutrients in them, much more than maize. So we need to eat those, to promote those. When I went to work with Amazon, Uka, Bigira, Sazare, Rio, Amanuta, I don't like this dark food and all that. But in those who don't know, I encourage you. At least let them have porridge. This Rio is very, very good uh, for us. Let's look at those issues. Um, a lot of investment needs to go into nationwide active social marketing. And then we go on out the, the prime seed, they are already into marketing. They are extremely good at marketing themselves. But what, they are marketing the right things. We support them. You have, you have invited us here. It's not just a commercial spot for yourselves, but I think it is worthwhile for the population of Zimbabwe. In closing, Honorable Minister for Agriculture, I would like to again to applaud and encourage this collaboration between my ministry and yours for nutrition and for health benefits. And the partnership with other stakeholders, the food growers, the population, the growers themselves, the farmers, the people who produce fertilizer, we will want to encourage that partnership. And agriculture is a very important sector for ensuring health and well-being of the population. It is the primary source of all nutrients that sustain human life. I would like to encourage and promote this collaboration in line with our Zimaset agenda and the scaling up of nutrition. Zimaset Panyaya Yechkaf nutrition. And it means value addition ukatora gold. Ukai tenge se kengori gold, amuna kuisa value. But ukatora gold, moeta ma ring e gold, moeta ma ma necklace e gold, mozo tenge sa, ma isa value. Do you know this value addition? In ni ni no na kutu health, value addition ni ne itwa newe munu yewe ku health. Ukajiga, sadza, nyama, beans. Jesus is not pinam dumbu. Value addition in those who have been able to do healthy. So you are the most apt example of value addition. You as a human being, you are the most appropriate example of what we call value addition. You eat all these various foods, zichiri in their basic form, but the body converts them into growth, into repairing of, of, uh, of maronda, into making you bright and healthy, so that is value addition. So in health, you are already doing a lot of value addition. With those few words, let me again congratulate uh, this gathering and the Minister of uh, um, Agriculture for inviting us uh, to promote health for the people of Zimbabwe. I thank you. Kana mchida kuwe wukutanga kunzuwa nyaya zakada ima zuwa yese garaima katea pa YouTube na kuklika button rakanzi subscribe. Munoba maita wukutanga pa ZimDITV News kunzuwa shirikuitika.